Okay, since we're ready to work, let's set up the shot. The way I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna take the advantage of the power of evolution system and actually define only the keyframes and then readjust the midpoints to make sure everything is perfect. Let's start with the first frame, which is in this case camera close to the object. I'll move the dolly, I'll adjust pan and tilt, and then I'll adjust zoom and focus to make sure that my framing is just right. Dolly all the way to the left. Now let's switch to pan and pan roughly. Perfect, that's about it. Tilt and zoom. I'm at 70 and I want to be at 24 because at this position I need to shoot wide. As soon as my framing is 100% right, I'll engage all axes on the controller and I'll hit mark keyframes, making sure that the playhead is on the beginning of timeline. What it does is that it actually stores the position, the current position of all axes. Now it's time to work on the opposite position and design your end frame. As soon as my camera is all the way back, I'll make sure to go to the last frame on the interface and mark the keyframe for the dolly. Now time for pan, tilt, adjusting zoom and focus. Let's pan so that the framing is more or less right and hit mark keyframe. The tilt needs to be adjusted a little bit. Perfect, mark keyframe again. Then zoom, we want to be at 70 mils to compensate for the dolly traveling all the way back. Again, mark keyframe. Now I need to make sure that the object is perfectly in focus here. Again, once everything is perfectly sharp and in focus, I hit mark keyframe on the focus. At this point, we have the beginning and the end frame adjusted perfectly, but we need to be sure that since the movements are not linear because they have easing, so the movement speeds up and slows down towards the end, we need to make sure that the focus and pan hit the right points during the travel of the dolly. How to do it? Let's go to the middle of the timeline and synchronize devices to playhead position. What I see is that my framing in the middle is not perfect, so I'll readjust pan to make sure that the bottle stays exactly in the center of the frame, which is what I want for this shot. Let's make sure the focus is right. A slight adjustment and we're right. In this particular situation, I added one midpoint, but probably to get things perfectly right, you would need to add a few more keyframes at different timestamps to make sure you have proper framing and proper focus as the dolly travels towards the object. Actually, let me set my playback time to 30 seconds, which should be definitely sufficient for this shot and for the end result you're probably gonna speed it up to 5 or 10 seconds, um, but setting it to 30 seconds will let us make sure that first it's achievable and executable by the hardware and second that we have plenty of footage to manipulate in post and speed it up if we want it. Let's kill the auxiliary lights and start the shot. A great thing about the Evolution system and the software is that actually as soon as your shot is designed and the motion curves are set, you can store them, you can recall them in the future in different situations and you can easily play them back across various modes such as live action, time lapse or stop motion. And that's what we're gonna do next. We'll repeat the same shot using time lapse mode and shooting raw still images to get a decent resolution, much more flexibility in post and to add a little bit of play by adding the ice cubes and trying to capture the melting process. As soon as your shot is designed, in order to play it back in time-lapse mode, you only need to adjust your timeline length. I do it by double tapping the timeline and I'll set it to three hours. That should be probably the right value for 
trying to do what we want to do with the ice cubes. Three hours, that's gonna give me about 720 shots using 15 seconds interval. Let's see if that works for this particular scenario.